I'll give it just a second for everyone's audio to kick in <laughs> before I start. I can see the names populating, so I'll just give that a second. All right, so it's 11, so I'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to this media roundtable on the National Guard Cyber Shield 2024. I'm Christina Mundy, and I will be moderating today's discussion. We are here with Army Brigadier General Terry Williams, who is the Exercise Director and Vice Director of Operations for Cyber with the National Guard Bureau. We also have Army Colonel Jeffrey Fleming from the Illinois Air Army National Guard, and he is the Exercise Officer in Charge. In addition, we have U.S. Army Major Sean Smith from the Pennsylvania National Guard, and he is one of the team leads for the exercise. I would also like to welcome First Lieutenant Ignis Zelenskas, Zelenskas from the Lithuanian Army. He is a cyber team lead for the exercise, along with First Lieutenant Philip Bozenak who works as a cyber officer with the Polish Army. I'm going to give um, um, them an opportunity to correct my pronunciation. <laughs> well, it was okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what we are here today to do is to discuss the National Guard Cyber Shield 2024 effort, and we appreciate if all questions would focus accordingly. Brigadier General Williams will start with an opening statement and then we will open for questions. And to ensure we allow for everyone to have the opportunity to participate, please ask one question, and if you prefer, a follow-up. If there's time at the end, we can open it up again for additional questions. As a reminder, please keep your mics on mute when you're not speaking. I do have a list of the media, and I will call on you by name. And with that, General Williams, you have the floor. Thank you. And good morning, live from CyberShield 2024. So I'm gonna talk about two pieces of the exercise. Uh, this portion of the exercise, I'm gonna save for the, the end of it, just so we can kind of um, you know, transition into the questions. But we actually have two portions of the exercise. We have the 91st Cyber Brigade, uh, which is the first, the only, and the best cyber brigade in the Army National Guard. Um, they are actually here certifying or validating four cyber protection teams from the National Guard, one Air Guard and three Army Guard teams. And then we have the, the other side, which consists of approximately uh, 900 sol soldiers and airmen and uh, industry members. Um, I guess I should have said participants really, but so again, approximately 900 participants, 27-ish blue teams, um, we also have our international partners here. Uh, so we have a total of, of 10 countries on keyboard, seven are state partners, um, and then and we have um, additional countries as well that are represented, so three additional countries. And essentially this is an unclassified, um, basically a cyber defense exercise uh, where we really kind of test um, their global technical agility and cyberspace, really. So again, this is really a chance for them. Um, as we all know, we are in conflict and cyber every day, and this is a chance for them to kind of take a knee. Um, in the first week, they do training. So we um, give them hopefully new skills and then um, have a little bit of fun with them over the weekend, let them kind of get to know each other um, while they're, they continue to enhance their cyber skills and some fun activities. And then we move them into the second week where we really test them in terms of their um, skills collectively. That's where they come together and have to kind of perform against different injects, everything from cyber. Uh, we give them legal information operations. We, we throw the entire kind of a kit at them and, and see how they react. Um, the, the leadership got to do some media um, engagements. So we really try to hit every skill set across the team and, and really test them there. So again, um, amazing individuals that get to come together um, to, at a site currently uh, hosted by the Virginia National Guard. So that's where we're located um, today. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to you guys for questions. Thank you. 
Thank you, General Williams, for your opening remarks. Um, for any media that would like to know more about our panelists, we will drop the bios of the members into this chat. So thank you and welcome again. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open up the floor for questions. So let's start. Uh, let's start with Mark from Defense Scoop. Yes, hi, uh, thanks so much for doing this. Um, I guess, how have you sought to bolster or improve the exercise from years past and how are you tying it into maybe more regionally focused exercises um especially ones that that the 91st is is doing um in, in virginia um i think around this time as well so i'll start and then i'll pass it over to the oic to kind of talk through um the improvements and that sort of thing so one of the things i didn't say is um this exercise is primarily ran by uh, volunteers that almost all of the staff at, are volunteers. Um, so as guardsmen, they have their full-time civilian job. They have their guard military job. And then this is almost a, kind of a think about a part-time job for them that they're taking lunches, evenings, weekends, and, and designing the exercise. So um, the fact that we do improve every year is amazing because we have these volunteers that come back and give all their personal time um, back in, into this exercise to improve it. But I'm going to turn it over to the OIC, Colonel Fleming, to kind of talk through um, some of those uh, improvements that we've seen through the years. Thank you, ma'am. So we go through every every exercise iteration, we go through a rigorous after action review um, at the staff level, at the team level, and those different parts and things so that we'll take those comments and continue to use those to make it better uh, within reason. So uh, we've done that. And I think the fact that the exercise continues to grow as General Williams said, the staff is all volunteer, and we also we cannot order anybody to come to this exercise. The participants come here because of his reputation, and and they want to be here and be a part of it. So, so I think that's a testament to that. To the other question, um, this exercise itself is to get after uh, national and now international collaboration and partnerships that we have, uh, and answer big questions and strategic type questions for the chief of National Guard Bureau. Um, as well as the respective governors and things of that nature. Uh, you mentioned some of the other, the regional, and there's also a lot of state level exercises uh, in the concept and uh, construct of things. Those are exactly those. Those are to focus on specific regional partnerships or state partnerships and alignments so that um, continuing to foster relationships and building uh, to, to support all the different mission sets that the National Guard can be called to uh, support. And those regional exercises, all fall kind of under the umbrella of cyber shield. So while each, a lot of the regions have their own regional exercises, that is kind of encompassed underneath our umbrella. Can you expand a little bit on the uh, international partners piece? Um, I know that obviously the, the state partnership program is is a, a pretty big deal, and given some recent conflicts, that that's kind of become more of a, of a higher profile. How has that kind of been bolstered this year? And can you explain kind of the importance of that in a more strategic standpoint? Yeah, yeah, certainly. So, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, last year was uh, our first kind of real uh, dive into it to give it a to give it a whirl. And you know, we got some, we had about four, or, sorry, five countries on keyboard last year and another couple that came and went to our uh, international partner day to learn about it. This year, we've increased that number. Uh, and again, we had a couple countries come to our international partner day that aren't on keyboard again to see if this is something they potentially want to come to. So it's, uh, it's an outreach that way. We do outreach through both the state partner programs with the states. And really, we provide the training venue for the states to uh, invite their, their partners along uh, to come and participate. And then strategically, we also work with the, the different combatant commanders to say, again, we have this venue available. If you were working uh, partnerships in your regions that you would like to uh, bring folks to, but they have to come with the state partner program because it is a National Guard exercise. And we, we truly do, um, I, I hold everybody accountable for the, the partner of that phrase is it's not a, um, I, I'm very deliberate and careful this doesn't turn into an international cyber competition because I think that then takes away from the partnership and training value, uh, but we've continued to grow it uh, and I expect that'll happen, but I will turn it over to um, our two partners here to uh, expand on their experiences here and um, their thoughts, so. <clears throat> okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so we as Paul and uh, we are in state partnership program with uh, National Guard from Illinois for the last over 
30 years, it actually started in 1993. We operate together in different domains and recently in the past few years, we've started building this interoperability in a cyber domain, which is a great deal for us. And one of the points of this relationship is to work together in the exercises like Cyber Shield this year. So uh, we exchange, we are exchanging experience. Uh, we are working together uh, because uh, as I know, cyber is not uh, about individuals. It's all about team play. So we are doing this uh, team play together to defend critical infrastructure because we know we all have uh, critical infra infrastructure uh, um, in, we have in Poland and we have in, uh, in the US. So it's really, it's a really valuable program and uh, I love to participate in such exercises. Uh, not much to add up uh, from, from my side. Uh, it's also uh, more than 30 years now with our Pennsylvanian friends uh, in, in terms of uh, collaboration. Uh, it is uh, totally about uh, sharing the experience, uh, sharing the knowledge. Uh, we, we will all uh, go back to our countries with uh, a few more uh, competences added to our competence list. Uh, something um, that uh, we all improve. We, uh, I believe, we also uh, we bring something here. We exchange experiences, the knowledge. Uh, it is uh, a really um, important exercise to hold. Uh, I I I know what what it costs uh, uh, to to make this possible. Uh, it is not easy. It's it's a lot of moving targets <laughs> that you have to put together to make this possible. Um, I have seen some uh, some improvements uh, how the, the, the hosting of uh, the exercise is done, how, how it's run and, and what uh, what things you um, stress on, like um, put the emphasis on. Uh, so I will definitely bring uh, bring home some some improvements uh, how we want to adjust uh, what we do. Thank you very much for that. And thank you, Mark, for your question. Um, we'll be moving on to uh, Jeff from The Voice of America. I don't have a specific question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next, I have Carly with Army Magazine. And thank you so much for having this. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Brigadier General Williams, in your opening comments, we are at war in cyberspace every day. So I was curious if you could just zoom out a little bit for us and give us a sense of what the biggest cyber threats that we face today and how we're kind of attacking them. Sure. So I'm going to make my blue team, I'm going to give him a warning though, so if you can think about it for a second, but we'll let him hop in here too and, and talk through it. But I would say um, really the, the things that we're seeing right now are primarily supply chain uh, type issues and, and if that's what I think that's what you're asking in terms of our question and what you're trying to get after here is just uh, what we're seeing across the board and it's really kind of the supply chain or you know that basically the um, how they can hit one element that's going to have connections to many right and so that's really I think what we've seen a proliferation with in terms of the attacks and that sort of thing. And then obviously, and, and this isn't anything new, this has happened probably, this happened during um, the pandemic, but we also see actors really kind of separating in, ter in terms of really specific skills. So you have one actor that will go as an access broker, and then you have the other actors that will do something else. Um, but I think that the uh, most concerning thing, at least from my foxhole, is really the collusion of the different threat actors. We're seeing that like we've never seen it before, um, where, you know, we've always had kind of pockets of bad actors, but they're kind of doing their own thing, and we're seeing them work together more. So I'll turn it over to our blue team, who has experienced some of those, some of that activity this week, and let them talk through what you see. Thank you, ma'am. So CyberShield has this uh, eerie capability to almost predict 
the types of attacks that are going to occur. And this has not only happened, you know, once but twice. So last year, I had the privilege of participating in Cyber Show as well. And the scenario was trains and train derailment. And that's exactly what happened in uh, a couple of our states. Um, and it was a big deal. Um, this year, the focus is water treatment. And my home state of Pennsylvania experienced just that with the Aliquippa Water Authority um, having ransomware placed on some of their externally facing uh, PLCs and sensors. Um, so it is directly applicable to the real world. It's eerie how well the planners of this exercise predict based on real world intelligence, the things we should be training on as a team. Um, and I know that you all don't have visibility into the, the exact nuts and bolts of what we see on, on, the, on the side of our team. But the types of attacks are exactly what uh, General Williams said is uh, supply chain attacks. Um, we have a world-class red team that uh, really does a great job of threat emulation. They have a high focus on that. So they will imitate the threat actors that are currently out there in the world and duplicate the exact same attacks that we as you know Lithuanians and Pennsylvania guardsmen can uh, work to detect and mitigate. So this, this exercise is one of the few times whenever you can practice defensive cyber in a way that you know isn't in a real world you know crisis mode situation. And then Carly, do you have a follow-on before I move on? Follow-up question is sort of with the international partners of mine. Um, so I know that we just talked about how the exercise kind of gives us a little bit of wiggle room because we're practicing and it's not an actual scenario. Um, but I'm always curious about how stuff that's going on today affects things. Um, so I was curious if you could speak to um, has the war in Ukraine and different cyber tactics that we're seeing out uh, throughout the world that we're fighting changed the approach to cyber shield in any way? Yeah. So, so re regardless of, of what conflict or, or where it's going on in the world, um, as, as Sean said, we do bring a world class out for, and we do get when we're doing our planning for this, we will go and meet with various federal partners at all levels to to see what is out there and going on. Uh, so that we can be as accurate and realistic as possible. And uh, he alluded to some of the stuff that's going on. Um, another one, you know, as we said, we did, you know, railroads last year. And shortly after the exercise, it wasn't just a U.S. railroad thing. There were some international railroad things going on. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the young lieutenant here was part of that response. But um, so it's, it's we don't focus on any specific conflict. We just focus on what's currently going on in the world today um, from the uh, the, the best uh, cyber malicious actors that we know we're going to have to contend with and be prepared to defend against. And we structure it that way so that we're all uh, better trained to face whatever threat, wherever. Thank you, sir. Um, and then thank you, Carly, for the questions. Um, we are moving on to Olga from Onst Network. Uh, thank you so much. And I just joined, so my apologies if I mentioned something that was already discussed. My question is whether your exercise includes any collaboration with other agencies or countries that are outside the scope of the group. Yeah, so um, it, it, we there are currently 10 um, partner uh, nations here that are actively participating with members on blue teams. Our international partner day includes a few others. Uh, that, that want to actively participate with us uh, and that are here. And then uh, beforehand, as was just mentioned, we, we meet with federal partners, state partners, and do lots of collaboration to make sure the, the intelligence we're getting to support the, the, the threat actors we're going to emulate and the different things we're going to do are as close to real and uh, what's going on in the environment and the world today that we can get to. And ma'am, if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And Olga, do you have any follow-on uh, questions or was that all? No, no, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, next, we have Anastasia from the Federal News Network. Anastasia, are you there? Yep, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you touched a little bit on this, but could you talk a little more about the scenarios, types of threats simulated, and also the tools and technologies you use during the exercise? Anything interesting to highlight there? 
Let me start and then I'll push it over to you. So, so we we really take kind of two different approaches, knowing that the different the incident response and in information technology um, is different than incident response and operational technology. And we want uh, the the participants to walk away understanding um, both of those, right? And so we we actually we will train them in several injects throughout the week where they have to they have to look at both environments and really um, determine how they're going to respond. Um, sometimes they don't even know that they have an operational technology environment. Um, and that is very much real life. That, that is, we will often go into an incident and you and you think you're dealing with an informational technology. And, and again, just a real quick, not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but information technology is just like when you're doing your email, you're surfing the internet. Operational technology is where the kind of the digital world meets the physical world. So think about when you know water, electricity, that sort of thing. And so, um, so a lot of times we will kind of we'll start them in the information technology um, environment and make sure that they understand that side of the house. And then um, whether they like it or not, we'll pivot them into the operational technology side and make sure that they have the requisite skills there and also on, and the understanding again. Um, very uh, opposite end of the spectrum in terms of the incident response steps. And then I'll turn it over to the officer in charge of the exercise to kind of take you a, a little bit deeper into our specific exercise. So I've got some blue team folks in the room with me, so I can't completely go into what they might be experiencing when they get back to their keyboards later today, but we'll talk mm -hmm. at a high level. Um, to, uh, so once upon a time, we, we switched this exercise from being a very adversarial force on force to a very deliberate training environment. So the first day we put them in their network and it's a, what we call a purple day. And so that, that what that means is the red team, uh, our, our pretend bad guys go in and, and meet up with the blue team, uh, our defenders. And it's a very collaborative effort on the first day. It's making sure they know that their tools are working. They can gain some confidence in the tools in the network so that they're prepared to uh, grow and learn because the next couple of days are going to be very stressful. So Day two, we escalated it in, in the same way that you would see a real um, a real cyber incident go down. We uh, or at least historically have. So we started in the uh, information technology systems with um, that threat actor stealing credentials and doing some other menacing things. We also added in, um, again, stuff we are starting to see in the environment. There was a deep fake that was produced on the range and proliferated around. And so now we're not only training them in the, the cyber technologies, but what else is going on when there's a, a cyber incident occurring that they as the defenders are going to have to be prepared to identify and manage because it plays into the overall part of it. So that came out. And then yesterday, uh, they uh, went over to their operational technology environment where uh, a supply chain attack was carried out uh, and some other things that are going on. And uh, as they're about to find out that, uh, as General Williams spoke about the, the credential theft, uh, and very much as in real life is that that was an access broker threat actor that did the credential theft and found those. They may or may not be handing that over to somebody that wants to do some other stuff and things here uh, to them later in the week. But uh, that is definitely how we get after it. Uh, we use multiple different threat actor groups. There are the stories developed behind them for the, the intelligence folks and the actors to have to consider, you know, who is this group? What are their, uh, what technologies they have available? What are their motives? So the defenders know what to go after to defend and, and where they may find them next. Uh, but I'll go ahead and turn it over to, to the three blue teamers we have here to see if they want to speak to some of the stuff they've been seeing. Um, not sure what they all caught. I haven't gotten their performance reports yet, but. Yeah, so uh, in my experience, there is great value with this purple approach. When, when we don't know this scenario prior to exercise, every day is different, but at the end of the, at the end of the, uh, oh, all day we have a meeting with red team, which is unique because uh, in the real life you cannot meet the bad guys, and here we can at the end of the day we can meet the bad guys, we can talk to them, to them, we can uh, you know speak about what we've seen, and then they uh, say what they did actually. So uh, this is great value in this purple approach and. As uh, Colonel said, uh, one day we are working on IT environment, the next day we are working on the OT side. So 
uh, as I said, uh, we never know what uh, uh, life's life brings to us. We don't know the scenario, and this is part of the exercise. We don't know the scenario, but we are prepared for everything. I will summarize by saying we train as we defend in real life. Um, so that comes from both a scenario perspective, which we've talked about, but also a tooling tactics and techniques and team operations perspective. So a lot of the things we use are open source, but we also use closed source tools during this exercise. Um, we have the room organized and set up and operating like a sock-like environment. Um, so that comes with you know having to meet new people, meet new partner nations, come together, learn roles and responsibilities, and then uh, quickly get up to speed and start running down uh, threat actors and, and injects that are happening. But um, like I said before, it's it's very difficult to train in a scenario like this because it requires a lot of moving parts, a lot of coordination, and Cyber Shield is by far the best exercise that I've ever experienced that accomplishes this. Um, I can add that uh, from my perspective, I really like the different perspective. Uh, many exercises run this that uh, the blue team uh, has a target to 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 lock into kind of shell to isolate the environment from uh, from the red team. Uh, here, the emphasis is on um, a situational awareness. Uh, the opportunity we we had to attend the training and to uh, to learn uh, additional tool for situational awareness together with the tools that we brought really uh, uh, brought our situational awareness at least in our team um, to to really high levels. I think uh, on day one we were a bit further than the red team uh, would uh, expect. Um, but uh, that wouldn't have been possible with that additional training week. And most probably that wouldn't have been possible with the collaboration with the really different uh, skill sets that we brought uh, to the team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anastasia, do you have a follow-on question or is that all? I do, I do. Thank you so much. And uh, could you, we we kind of touched on it, but could you um, highlight some of the lessons learned? What are you going to, um, what are you going to take out of the exercise? Blue teams. Yeah. Blue teams. Um, oh, I, I think uh, what, I mean, I will, I will bring it quite a few things, but, uh, but maybe one of, of those is um, yeah, eliminating or, or minimizing the gamification factor where uh, you don't have to really compete between the teams, uh, then you really focus on the training. Um, when, when you put blue teams in, in the situation where they compete against each other, uh, you can win it, but not necessarily you will learn something new. So that is uh, one thing uh, on, on my side. Uh, and then I also liked uh, the red team transparency uh, aspect. Uh, usually you wouldn't have um, uh, such a detailed walkthrough and, and we can map what actually you saw when versus when uh, those things were actually run by the red team. So this, this I really appreciated and the whole team appreciated that. Um, most probably those are the two, two key points that, uh, oh, and the, the training itself, the, the week of the training, that's, uh, that's something also to, to think and, and to think about the theme that you want to go through during that one exercise. Okay, so I strongly agree with you. That training brought a lot to us. Uh, also, we are working together with in small teams. Actually, we are working in team around of ten in the blue team, so we can exchange our experience, uh, exchange what we know, how we use different tools, how uh, what's our approach. So I will bring this home and spread my colleagues 
I uh, teach them what I I was taught during these two weeks. So this is uh, great value uh, in it. Uh, what more can I say? Uh, it is really hard to uh, create such exercise when you don't have to compete against each other, as you said. It's not about who will win. It is not about the scoreboard. It is about you know learning and this transparency from the red team is great. And I will highly recommend creating further exercise that mm. has no gamification, just learning and exchanging experience. So it's it's surprising to some whenever I say this, but I don't come to Cyber Shield to learn technical things you know i come to cyber shield to learn how to coordinate a team and to communicate and that's really what amplifies the power of the individual um so we have a lot of great operators and and my lithuanian counterpart here is too humble when he he speaks but those guys are top notch and we are very grateful to have them here but if any one person is just engrossed in their computer and their keyboard and typing away um it's not nearly as effective as them information sharing with everyone in the room, with fusion centers, with everyone abroad, and then gathering that information and bringing it back down and actioning it. So I feel it's my job as a leader, and it's also a very difficult job to coordinate and communicate and uh, make sure that everyone's operating effectively. So that's primarily what I take away from this exercise. And just one quick note before we move on that um, Colonel Fleming and his team they do a full assessment for the blue team. So they do get a full assessment of how they performed on what task and that sort of thing. So they they, they get another kind of uh, mechanism of feedback beyond the kind of the, the ones that they're going through currently. Thank you everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Anastasia for asking uh, the questions. And I would like to move on to Christina from AWPS News. Christina, just uh, checking to see if you're there from AWPS News. If your microphone's not working, feel free to put it in the chat. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. So I I'm a, uh, would like to know a little bit more about um, when an incident occurs, how would everyone be called together? Uh, is that one of the things that you drill on also? Thank you. So, so the scenario that we're using is a state active duty um, scenario. And what that means is essentially uh, the National Guard has two missions. They have a federal mission and then they have a state mission. And um, so basically they, they can do their Title 10 mission um, under the, the president's authority or they can do their state mission under the governor's authority. And so for this particular year in this particular exercise we are exercising their activation under their governors for state active duty um so obviously that is all of the different you know the 27 different elements out there that that would be kind of individually activated um it could potentially be a national event we don't necessarily while at the leadership level we have those conversations at the level that they're at they don't see that um, it's basically treated as 27 different exercises, if you will, um, if, and, and they're, they're all doing the same scenario and, and for the most part, not supposed to talk to each other because they're at different levels. So, and I say not talk to each other, I mean, you know, a, as a team, they're not supposed to be telling them where things are at in the exercise in case one is slower than or faster than the other, but they're allowed to talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Um, Christina, did you have a follow-on question? Uh, well, I was wondering, um, in a in a real life world situation, uh, would uh, would you be would would you would you be able to come together? Because the focus would be perhaps um, in one area, or it might be diffused and uh, across several geographic areas. Uh, also on Maybe it's on infrastructure or maybe it's on something else. Um, 
so the training, I guess, is specific to each of these things. But then would it would you be able to say have the same fusion cell structure that comes together to address the need at the time? And and how quickly is that? Are you able to come together like that? Thank you. So for the for the fusion cell specifically, so as General Williams uh, mentioned, when we come under uh, the authority of the governor, we're coming alongside the rest of the folks and partners in the state. So I know um, a lot of them already have those fusion centers in, in their uh, emergency management agency, different centers, depending on what they call them. So those just stand up as part of those normal plans where the National Guards have liaisons already built in um, and running tabletop drills for any sort of response that that those states may face. When you're talking specific cyber incidents, that's going to depend on, uh, there's a whole lot of things, we won't go too far into it here, you know, there's 54 different National Guards, so lots of different legal authorities and, and standing agreements that exist, but uh, it's it, we, we do rehearse that, and from a, a call-up standpoint, uh, the National Guard has been involved in uh, defending states against any sort of disaster, whether it's natural or man-made or in between for, for quite a long time, so um, so we've got that down, and uh, we just fall right along in that with space. Thank you, sir, for that answer. Um, I would like to see if uh, Shu from Taiwan Central News Agency is available. Shu from Taiwan Central News Agency, are you on? And again, if your microphone doesn't work, feel free to drop the question in the chat. Give it another minute. Okay, nothing heard. Um, so I would like to take a moment to offer an opportunity to uh, Lieutenant Zelenskas and Lieutenant Volzanop to share any additional experiences with the state partnership programs. Um, gentlemen, do you have any additional thoughts that you'd like to share? <laughs> Okay, so in the state partnership program, uh, as I said at the very beginning, uh, we are for, for over 30 years in this program. It, uh, despite, uh, we're not only training in cyber domain, for example, uh, last month in May, uh, there were held exercises in Boyd when we're actually from uh, National Guard from Illinois were exercising together with Polish infantry. So uh, what can I add? You know, the cooperation between us gives us really a lot. Yeah. Um, I can only agree that it, it is about uh, collaboration. Uh, and I, I could I want to link this to to blue and red team. Um, it's it's the same principle. The blue team makes the red team better. Red team makes the blue team better. Uh, same thing with our Pennsylvania friends. We uh, we're happy to be here to to take part in this exercise. Uh, we host an exercise uh, in Lithuania. We always um, welcome. Uh, uh, Pennsylvania National Guard uh, to join that exercise and by exchanging uh, experiences by having these joint events and have them reoccurring we we are able to to um, uh, evolve our our competences in in cyber because uh, you know cyber landscape is 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 changing uh, day by day so it's important to have these partnerships. And I mean, uh, it's also a coincidence that uh, we meet here with uh, with uh, Poland uh, on the same table on the different continent. Just a couple of years ago, we were joining uh, uh, together. We were joint, uh, a joint cyber team in another cyber exercise. So it is about the collaboration. It is, uh, it is the keyword uh, in, in, in yeah, improving in cyber. Yes, and I can continue that. In cyber, we don't have really borders. Like we touch real thing when it comes to operational technology, like mm. you know, water plants. But uh, that's why we are working together because 
suburb doesn't have borders. So you know, one day we are working in America and next month we can be training in Europe, in Poland or in Lithuania and in any other country. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we actually did hear, uh, we, we received a note from the Taiwan News Agency. Um, his mic was not working. <laughs> so um, I'm going to actually ask the question on his behalf. Um, he, he said, I would like to ask if you can tell us the countries that are involved in the exercise. Thank you. So I'm gonna ask, um, so we, we, like I said, I, we do have seven state partner countries and we have three additional countries, but I just asked, um, if, if he'll submit that question to the NGV PAO and they'll get those that list of those countries to him. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and and yeah, do we have sorry, National Guard Bureau um, Public Affairs Office. I probably shouldn't talk in acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can take that to task. Um, and then we have one question from uh, Jeff from the Voice of America. Um, he I wanted to ask what to what extent does the exercise address information warfare and influence operations via cyber? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we do have we have several injects again that really um, and, and uh, Colonel Fleming talked about it that we have we throw just the, the things that we would expect them to deal with in normal day to day operations. We had a deep fake video. Um, we have social media in the play. So it's really just um, the things that you would see um, in day-to-day -day type things and making sure that they're not just kind of, you know, head in the sand, doing what, worried about ones and zeros. They understand that the, the rest of the world is going on around them and that they've got to deal with those different aspects. Um, and, and we certainly, uh, we stress the, the team leaders, as I mentioned, we throw them in front of a camera and make sure that they're ready for uh, the, the media engagements, that sort of thing. So uh, we we absolutely have those injects in play, but ultimately uh, we you know we're, we're really while we're throwing those different distractors at them, we're really focusing them on getting better as cyber defenders. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, and then as we uh, wind down on our time, uh, General Williams, I wanted to ask if you have anything that you'd like to leave everyone with regarding Cyber Shield. Yeah, absolutely, because I don't want you to think that I'm going to leave you with doom and gloom when I talk about how <laughs> the actors are all, um, you know, working together, because as you can see, and I think our partners said it aptly, is um, it's an ultimate team sport, uh, but when we all come to the table and build that trust and, and work together, uh, then then we're going to be okay. And so I think that's what uh, Cyber Shield is, is really demonstrating, that, um, that we can all come together, um, we build that trust, we build increase capability and, and skill sets, but really uh, uh, we'll be okay if we all work together. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you to everyone for being here today and to our panelists for joining us to share all about the great things that, are Cyber, Sh that Cyber Shield is doing. If anyone has any follow-on questions, please send them to the National Guard Bureau Public Affairs Media Operations Team, and we will get back with you as soon as possible with an answer. Thank you. And this concludes our media roundtable on CyberShield 2024.